I am loving watching it as these comic industry cancel pigs just scramble over and over again to justify all the crap they've been putting us through over the last 10 years in the comic book industry. We've seen beloved characters just destroyed. They can't come back from this. Once you gay eyes Iceman, how do you even retcon it so it's not a thing anymore? I mean, you just can't get that taste out of your mouth. At least Iceman can't get that taste out of his mouth. I'll fix this in edit, guys. That was disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> nobody's been crazier in this whole process than Mark Wade. And I wrote up an article for Fandom Pulse this morning. And of course, that's fandompulse.com for your comic industry news, where uh, I detail the fact that Mark Wade pretty much admits that we were right all along with our comics gate movement, even though uh, he's still trying to, you know, do these stages of grief with the comic industry. Uh, which I got into in the article also. Very funny stuff coming from Wade, but there's been a history of this over the past several uh, weeks. And of course, everybody in the comic industry has been just going at Mark Miller for interviewing that comic shop owner and saying that things are bad. Now, guys, things are good, at least on the indie front. So check out my books here, which is on my web store, delarose.com. And this link's in the description below. I have all sorts of different stuff for your taste. I got, uh, you know, you get your female lead if you want it. You can get your male lead if you want it. You can get some sci-fi, you can get some superhero, you can get some comedy, uh, you can get some fantasy. I have a little bit of everything for everyone. When I make my books, I try to make it with as broad of an audience as possible. I'm not trying to like appeal to some niche of like some weird fetish group uh, that is uh, making a lot of noise out in the news these days. That's what Marvel and DC are trying to do. Everything has to be some weird sexual fetish with them, and that's why their stories are a disaster. It's all self-inserts. I don't have any self-inserts. I just make different characters that are fun for you, and I hope you'll check this out on my web store, like I said. And make sure to hit the like and subscribe button while you're at it, since you're here. All right, so this started the other day with Mark Wade going off like a falling star rocketing across the sky. Another former comic superstar whose heat is fading chooses to cry for attention by blaming the industry, his peers, and the audience rather than taking stock of his own professional progress, admitting that we are often the authors of our own fate, finding the courage to reinvent himself and stay relevant. Well, uh, Mark Wade is really not that relevant these days. I mean, he is in a fading comic book industry where nobody's reading at this point. And he finally kind of fessed up to the fact that, like, he was wrong. So here's my article on it. Uh, Mark Wade admits Comics Hate was right. There are massive problems in the comic book industry. And I go through the history of exactly how he self-inserted himself into all this drama over the years in order to try to keep his gatekeeping position. Of course, this all started back in 2017 when your boy Zach, Diversity in Comics, uh, was, of course, panning these books made by Marvel and DC. They were disasters. Yellow Flash uh, was joining him at that point. That Umbrella guy was making videos. I know he's a Johnny Depp channel now, but he was making videos on comics back then, believe it or not. Um, and, of course, I actually wrote in uh, The Federalist. This is my journalism credentials right here. Uh, and this is my article in The Federalist. This brought things to mainstream attention, got on radio shows and uh, conservative talk shows across the nation, uh, bringing to light exactly the crap that Marvel's pulling everywhere. So this grew, and Mark Wade, of course, couldn't deal with this. Uh, he, he found out Diversity in Comics was going to Baltimore Comic Con. Just so nobody forgets this, I put this in the article right here. Uh, and he said... If anyone sees this gentleman or any of his friends, I need you to come find me and tell me immediately. Even if I'm on a panel, come up and interrupt. Please circulate this request widely as you possibly can through all of your social media accounts. Fellow pros tell each other, this is about attempting to lessen the harassment of women in comics, and it's important. Please spread the word. Thank you. So Mark Wade wanted to harass a YouTuber for making bad reviews about comics gate, about comic books. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely crazy. This is why comics gate started, really. I mean, the fact that industry pros could do this and try to like virtue signal that it's some sort of feminist kind of thing. No, it's just because the comics that Marvel and DC were making sucked because they're a bunch of self-insert social justice laden crap. <laughs> That's all of Mark Wade. Jesus. Now we're six years into this, and of course, after a couple weeks of uh, Mark going off and talking about, uh, you know, how uh, Mark Miller is really just crying for attention, and it's the alt-right, and he'd like to burn the industry down, uh, he makes this rant instead. He goes, yep, the mainstream superhero comics industry is having a rough time of it lately. Oh, really? 
That's what we were saying. All of you have been gaslighting us in the mainstream media saying, oh, everything's fine in comics. Sales are actually up. It's been a lie, and we knew it. I called it out on Fandom Pulse also that the numbers are fake. Uh, they're being manipulated, of course, and the analysis is disingenuous. Uh, it's all coming from Heidi McDonald uh, of Comics Beat, a member of the Whisper Network, of course, that Mark Wade's attempting to get in good with here. But he says, a few people are saying otherwise, and my heart goes out to struggling retailers. At least he admits it. Finally, he's like coming to that stage of grief, right? Because, you know, you start out with, uh, what is it, anger, right? <laughs> I put it in here. Um, <laughs> uh, denial first, right? Uh, anger, right? Which was, uh, was, uh, your boy Zach here bargaining, which of course is, uh, his settlement with your boy Zach, uh, on the, of course the lawsuit that he had with him depression, which Mark Wade, of course, has claimed he suffered from, uh, over the years. And this is acceptance that there is pro there's actually a problem in the comic industry. Like we've always been saying steps need to be taken and here it is and even the alt right loud mouse makes some good points now it's really ridiculous that, that mark wade is still being uh crazy with his rhetoric calling anybody who disagrees with him on the internet alt right i've tried to talk with mark wade because i'm actually a fan of a lot of mark wade's comics i said come on here and like let's talk some comics let's say let's let people know what you're doing uh these days i'd love to talk about your legion of superheroes your fantastic four it's some of my favorite stuff uh, and of course he told me back don't waste my time and uh, it's really sad. I mean, obviously, if there's one person who wants to turn off comic fans, it's Mark Wade. It's his type of people. It's not us. We're inclusive of pretty much everybody. We just want to have some good comics, have some fun here in an entertainment industry. People like Mark Wade can't allow it because they're very scared of losing their clout with all these people. God knows why. So he come, goes on with this. But make better comics becomes make more comics that are my own personal taste. That's a solution I can't get behind. It's not about personal tastes, Mark. I mean, there's plenty of comics out there. And of course, that's why I make a diversity of comics, uh, which is on my web store for different people's tastes, right? And that way people check one out and hopefully they'll see my writing's good and they'll check out the other stuff, even if it's not like the genre they prefer. That's the goal. That's why I have fantasy, sci-fi, superhero, all the things. So... That's the deal there. But people are making extremely niche things like out of superheroes like Superman, Spider-Man in order to just like make their own niche personal taste. That's been the problem. That's what we're complaining about. We're not saying that like our personal tastes are it, but there are objective standards, Mark. And of course, Marvel and DC are not meeting them these days and we all know it. That's been a big part of the problem. Badly produced comics sure aren't helping. And that's exactly what we said. This is where he's saying we're right. They're making badly produced comics in the mainstream industry, and that's what's happening. There's a bunch out there. Yes, he is. Neither is pretending that bad superhero comics is some sort of new phenomenon. They always do this. It's always been bad. Well, if the comic industry has always been bad, how did they get a following to begin with? It wasn't. When you look at Steve Ditko's work, when you look at Jack Kirby's work, they were not bad. If you look at John Buscema's work, it was not bad. A lot of stuff happened in the late 80s, early 90s, when these companies, Marvel and DC, decided to flood the market to try to edge out anybody else uh, in the industry to try to make their legacy properties continue. It was a big corporate scam thing then, and then hacks got into the industry at that, at that point. Later on, hacks got into the industry because of people like Mark Wade. They brought in their friends, their girlfriends like Devin Grayson, who then pushed things into, into a different direction, of course, uh, and made things more about social justice and the like. Those friends then brought in their friends, and that's exactly where we're at these days with complete hacks running most of the mainstream industry. It wasn't always like this, but it was a slow descent, and it finally sped up and ramped up to an extreme degree uh, back in 2015, 2016. That's the truth of things right here. As someone who's been reading them for 60 years, I can, I can promise you that many of the ones you remember with nostalgic fondness because you liked them are just as bad compared to the actual classics of the day. Just because you and your friends don't like someone doesn't mean it's bad. So Mark misses the point, okay? It's not that me and my friends don't like anything unless me and my friends are all the comic readers in the world because nobody's buying this crap anymore. Uh, you're trying to just like make your cognitive dissonance work here, Mark. I understand this because you can't, outright say that things are in such a struggling position at this point but you're going to try anyway you did actually say in here that we are right that there are problems that there's a lot of crap books out there so why would you then put a caveat on it why because you have to virtue signal to your friends that uh you have to make sure your friends tastes and the ones that they like are the ones that are still out there even if nobody wants to read them you're doing exactly what you're saying we're doing in that sense we're actually just trying to make comics better across the board, Mark, and at least you're coming close to admitting it in this deal here. I think you should probably join Comicsgate. That'd be a good next step. If anything, 
let's do an interview. Let's talk. Let's actually talk about comics and what makes comics objectively good and bad. You're an editor. I mean, you shouldn't be scared to be able to do that, right? Shouldn't be a problem. All right. Thanks for thanks so much for watching, everybody. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.